And as doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine make their way into the arms of the first phase of recipients, today the data the FDA will be using to potentially authorize Moderna's vaccine was made public. 83-page document from Moderna and the FDA's 54-page briefing document full of details on who received the vaccine thus far, how effective it was. Dr. Frank George has been going through that and is here with some of the highlights now. Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin, so the summary lays out the demographics of the over 30,000 study participants, half of which received the vaccine, the other half received placebo. The results of the Moderna trial were remarkably similar to the Pfizer results and came to the same conclusion. Their vaccine is extremely effective. Here are some of the similarities and differences between the vaccine trials. For the Moderna study, two doses of their mRNA vaccine were administered 28 days apart. That's different than the 21 days between doses of the Pfizer vaccine. 25% of those who enrolled in the Moderna study were over the age of 65. That's similar to the 21% in the Pfizer vaccine study who were over 65. The primary question was how effectively the Moderna vaccine could prevent symptomatic COVID-19 infection 14 days after the second dose of the vaccine. Pfizer looked at seven days. Here are some of the characteristics of the people in the study. 79% were white and 10% were African American. 22% had one high-risk condition, like chronic lung disease, significant cardiac disease, severe obesity, liver disease, controlled HIV infection, or diabetes. 4% had two or more high-risk conditions. At the time data was initially submitted to the FDA, 90 people who had received the placebo developed COVID-19 compared to only five who received the vaccine, showing an overall efficacy of 94.5%. That was similar to the efficacy of 95% for the Pfizer vaccine. The Moderna data was further broken down by age groups and found between age 18 and 65, the vaccine was 95.6% effective, while it was 86.4% effective in people over 65. That was not statistically different. Now, from the standpoint of side effects, the most common was pain at the injection site, fever, headache, fatigue, body aches, and joint pain were also more common in the vaccine group than the placebo group, although the preliminary FDA evaluation was that there were no specific safety concerns that would prevent it from being authorized. Back to you. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, and as the vaccine rolls out, there's a brand new tool on ClickOnDetroit.com tracking where doses are going. In fact, you can see it on this map. That distribution has been fairly limited, of course, but sure to change over these next days and weeks. And we've got a link to that right on the homepage of ClickOnDetroit.com.